billowing clouds of dust herald your arrival. Dust in the air that is born from the erosion of the walls, the statues, and our own bones. These stones heard so many sins that they could do no more than succumb, shuddering before their guilty echoes. Echoes that could not bear the seclusion that I imposed upon them and that escaped from me. Crawling along these walls, eroding them until their immaculate ashes buried us all. Penitent one, you will now reveal your sins, those that your tears can never atone for.
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Radames, spent my long life listening to the confessions of so many burdened hearts. Even after death, I could still hear the echo of their mournful voices, begging to be heard again, pleading for confession. But their pain never managed to bring tears to my eyes. One of those echoes, those incessant voices, was the very voice of the miracle who commanded me to guard its sacred regret. I obeyed, and it was then that my tears did flow. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. The memory of him still hurts. So it was that a humble married couple, torn apart by their inability to conceive a child, entrusted themselves in their utter desperation to the miracle. A miracle whose light seemed to have gone out in all our hearts. For having long ceased to bathe us in its benevolent radiance, we believed it extinct. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to where that terrible dream, from which one never wakes, awaits. Inside this merciless and cold metallic casing. I live in this cage in the shape of what was long ago my body. I live and I feel that I am directed by forces that undermine mine own will. When I close my eyes in the intimate darkness behind my eyelids, I am still dead.
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. My body has been returned to me at last. I am now master of this flesh, of this trembling, of this agony. How sweet the pain when it is our own, penitent one. You who came to witness the miracle, behold. But their plea was so humble and true that the miracle, whose lofty reasons are beyond our earthly ken, finally stirred from its slumber, aroused from its repose, and moved by the sweet melody of such noble supplications, it blessed this couple of devout believers, whose faith had never wavered, granting them the child they so desired. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to wear that terrible dream from which one never wakes, awaits. Welcome to this palace. How silent, how mundane these luxurious chambers have been. Halls that were once frequented by the most distinguished of visitors. They all ended up staying here, captives. Trapped, petrified like golden statues, prisoners of the very riches they craved. Dance now with my steel, penitent one. We will embroider your flesh in sacred torment, in a tapestry of blood and gold. On guard!
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Orospina, am the daughter of the looms, of the mantle of gold and fine silver and scarlet and white, eldest sister of the confraternity of embroiderers, ancient secret of the needle and the thread. Where I go, naught shimmers with gold, and my graceful steel will never again adorn the air with its elegant silver calligraphy. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. But the miracle who bestows and wrests away its grace with inscrutable agency, saw its will tarnished in its prolonged absence. Erring in its newly created work, it conferred on that child as much its own as that of another. The blessing of deformity, it spread throughout our land like a contagion. Its accursed seeds germinating like the wounds that sprout upon the scourged flesh of the repentant. The warm and golden caress of twilight invites me to close my eyes. Let the miracle cast open its black gates so I might venture to where that terrible dream from which one never wakes awaits.
How dark and uncertain are the rooms where the miracle allows us to see and talk to one another. Even after the deaths. Even after the dreams. Penitent one, we are in the chapel of the five doves. And before you prevails the narrative voice of the witness. All that remains of me is testimony. For my deceased body lies exposed in its urn of crystal and gold. You return from the long dream to avoid the birth. You will have need of the uncorrupted tongue that my mortal remains still harbor, whose forbidden whispers will guide thee on the path to such an undertaking. Release the five doves, and thus the urn containing my body shall be opened. Wake up now from this dream. The miracle was to create a new icon, an incarnate icon for all to revere, a symbol in which all our faiths, pleas, and hopes might be united in communion, so as to expand its diminished, almost extinct, might. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, Escape your gilded prison.
Lacking sufficient mastery, the miracle did fail in its efforts to incarnate, manifesting only in the form of disease, deformity, and pain. It spread more and more of its aberrations, like sores on diseased skin, in many places and on innocent bodies. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison. The gaze of an innocent, looking for a glimmer of hope in the visage of so much desolation. It took nay more than that, for the shape of a heart to be molded out of the air itself. Behind the most wondrous clouds that did turn the sunset crimson. Oh, innocent vision, you madeth the mirage true, relying on pure faith. Twas then that the miracle gained its last chance. Dove, 
who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison. Anon, this glass sarcophagus shall open, the relic of mine own uncorrupted tongue and its secrets shall soon be yours. Then this shadow can give thee no more. I go soon to that lodging between light and nowhere. This shall be our farewell. Dove. Who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison. This endless waiting has been my penance. The original penance, as old as the miracle itself. It appointed me first among penitents, 
perpetual by its grace, perpetual in awaiting you an eternity. My miracle, heed my prayer. Grant me thine blessing to fulfill thine holy command. Dress my body in wounds. Lacerate the tattered parchment that clothes my flesh. For I am the first penitent, and you shall be the last. Now let the Crimson Bindings finish what they once began. My penance is far from over.
The child is born. The clouds open up before thee and shed crimson tears. Thus begins the work of the High Dramatist. The child is the clouds thus begin. Incorporeal and inscrutable fathers. I am the heir of your all encompassing light. Devotion itself, embodied in weathered flesh and gilded filigree. Your magnum opus. Though I am crowned with your glory, why do you censure my presence alongside you? What is this obscure darkness of unanswered cries that prevents me from understanding the purpose of my birth? Are the same crimson clouds that heralded my welcome the grave omen of your judgment? If this confrontation is proof of thy dignity of your glory, then so be it.
Now I understand. And for this, I offer thee my humble thanks. This pain is my baptismal sacrament that will unite us in communion to make it flesh. Thus, we will be reborn as a new symbol incarnate, overflowing with devotion. The beginning of a new era for the miracle the second son. will, incorporeal and inscrutable fathers, I am the heir of your all-encompassing light. Devotion itself, embodied in weathered flesh and gilded filigree. Your magnum opus. Though I am crowned with your glory, why do you censure my presence alongside you? What is this obscure darkness of unanswered cries that prevents me from understanding the purpose of my birth? Are the same crimson clouds that heralded my welcome the grave omen of your judgment? If this confrontation is proof of thy dignity of your glory, then so be it.
Doth thou respond to my pleas? With pain? Pain in the flesh. Yet your very flesh I am. Pain in the heart. Yet your heart itself I hold. My punishment will be your sole legacy. And I shall die. I shall die reconciled with the mystery of my birth. The devotion of the many was made incarnate and suffered pain. The affliction cometh to an end, for the icon falls, and with it the miracle's designs and its will so capricious. And so you shall ascend, both in body and soul through dreamed kingdoms, to the holiest of places, to the cradle of all blessings, safe under our watchful eyes. And once there, you will be captured within the ancient canvas of light and time. The penitence is thus complete.